Hi, this is TG Garrick again, and I'm here with another episode of this unboxing series that I'm doing now that I'm back from my trip to China and have lots of tea waiting for me and tea that I brought with me. Um, and today I'll talk a little bit more about a tea factory that I went to in um, Shaoxing, um, which is in Fujian province. I'm sorry, is in, is in Zhejiang province. <laughs> and this was very different than most of the tea farms that I'd seen, which were mostly small holder farms. This was a very large farm, um, the largest producer of Japanese teas in China. The name of the farm is, or the name of the, the company, I guess I should say, is Shaoxing Yucha Sun Tea Company Limited. And this is their company brochure. And I'll just show you a couple of pictures from this and from some of my own photos and tell you a little bit about the place. So it's huge. It's it's really enormous. It's um, They have about 80,000, I'm sorry, 80 million square meters of tea farm. Uh, and they make about 3,500 tons of tea every year. Um, they make uh, Japanese teas, like I said. So they make a lot of sencha. Um, they also make... Um, matcha. So they're the largest producer of matcha in China, I believe, is what they told us. And now most of this matcha is being exported to Japan, and there a lot of it is being used to flavor tea, fla green tea flavored things. So, you know, matcha cookies and candies. Um, but they do also produce some matcha that's higher quality for drinking. And they also produce some Chinese teas. So I'll show you their, a little bit of their product catalog and some pictures from the factory. Um, so here are the products that they produce, and they make sencha, an organic sencha, um, gyokuro, tencha, matcha, bancha, hojicha, as well as some Chinese green teas, um, one called Hongqing green tea, and they also make a high-quality gunpowder, which isn't on their catalog, but it's something we tasted. And they also produce some um, tizans, um, eucomia, leaf tea, which I don't know much about, and mulberry leaf tea, which I have a sample of. So they gave me samples, little individual packets of mulberry matcha. And so I'll taste this later on in this video and tell you what I think. I'm really excited about these. Sounds really interesting. Um, so uh, we got a tour of the field, and they grow mostly Japanese varieties. They grow mostly okomidori and yabu yabukita but they also grow uh, Longjing 43. So those are three names of tea cultivars um, that are, two of them are Japanese and, and one is a, was, was uh, developed in China. Um, it's a uh, pretty, like I said, it's a very large factory. It's a large field. And also these fields happen to be planted on top of the, the tombs of six Song Dynasty kings. So some areas of the tea fields are protected um, and they have tea fields planted over them. The, the tombs are underground, um, but they're protected from any sort of deeper underground development, I guess. Um, inside, we got to tour the factory a little bit. And I think one of the most interesting things was seeing part of the Sencha production line. And we saw these big um, mesh nets that went all the way up to the ceiling. And asking, I asked what these were. And uh, this is for after the kill green step. So in, in Japanese teas, they're steamed to denature the enzymes to, to keep them as green teas and prevent them from becoming black teas. And that steaming uh, leaves the tea leaves very hot and we, we wanna cool them down as quickly as possible to preserve that really green flavor. So the tea leaves after they're steamed to denature the enzymes, they're blown through these mesh nets up into the air and they tumble back down and then they get blown into a second one and they tumble back down and get blown into a third one and then back down and blown into the next step. And so that's, this whole setup is just for cooling the leaves down. And there are two different types of sencha. One is called asamushi, which is lightly steamed. And one is called fukamushi, which is deeply steamed. And I don't know for certain, but I imagine the difference between these two styles is the timing um, of this step, or maybe Fukumushi doesn't have this step, or, or maybe there's only one big uh, net instead of three. I'm not sure, but my guess is that's where the difference happens. A lot of what they make also is industrial products for 
um, making ready to drink teas, bottled teas, and um, tea bags. So what we saw in the factory was mostly bags that were going to be shipped to other factories to make these sorts of products. Um, this time of year, they weren't harvesting or processing anything. So we all we got to see what was in their in their storage area and seeing the machines non-operational. So all in all, it was a really great opportunity to get to see this farm, and especially because it was so different than all the smallholder farms I had been seeing. And it was very interesting and, and, and very educational kind of trip. And I'm gonna brew up some of this mulberry leaf matcha now that they that they gave to us. I'm gonna make this up, and I'll tell you what I think. I think this is meant to be just consumed as um, pure tea and not, you know, mixed with milk as a latte or anything like that. But we'll see. Maybe it might be sweetened. I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to use the whole packet for one serving. I'm guessing they're single serving. It looks just like real matcha. It looks like Camellia sinensis matcha, um, which I guess isn't that surprising if you take any green leaf and uh, pulverize it. It's going to look pretty similar. There are some lumps, so I am going to take my uh, tea scoop here and just use them to kind of flatten out and smash some of those lumps so it'll make it easier to whisk. Okay, I've got the tea all kind of smoothed out. It smells really nice. It does smell different than uh, matcha. It's, um, I don't know, it does smell kind of sweet, kind of like a cake or something almost. And I'm just going to use pretty small volume, maybe three ounces-ish of water and we'll whisk it up. If you've never done this before, it's really fun. Um, it takes a little bit of practice. It's all in the wrist. <laughs> and the goal is to get a nice foamy surface with very even bubbles. And something like this. So I'm going to taste it. It's a lot less bitter than um, real matcha. Um, even high quality real matcha has a little bit of bitterness, which is actually nice. It kind of balances the, the other flavors in there. This really doesn't have any bitterness at all. Um, so I don't know if I like that too much. It's very healthy tasting. <laughs> um, you know, it tastes very vegetal, but but not as bitter and a little bit more malty kind of uh, than the Camellia sinensis version. And it has a sweet aftertaste to it for sure. And this is of course not caffeinated. It's just mulberry leaves. Um, there's no caffeine in them. There are a whole bunch of vitamins and things in it. So this is more of a, a health drink, I think. Um, but it's not bad. I think I would prefer just to drink real matcha and be caffeinated <laughs> and probably get a lot of the same nutrients and vitamins in there. Um, kind of weird, kind of good, can't decide. <laughs> Don't think I would I would buy it, a, a, buy it and drink it on a regular basis, but it's not offensive. It's, um, you know, it's good. It would probably be better. I would maybe put it in a smoothie or something, whereas I like matcha just straight up. It's just, I think it needs a little bit of bitterness to cut cut it because it's so thick and it's kind of savory malty. It needs something to kind of cut through that a little bit. Uh, anyway, that was my visit to, let's see if I can say it again, Yucha Sun, Yucha Sun, Yucha Sun, I think, <laughs> tea company in Shaoxing, China. And uh, I wrote a blog post about it earlier, which um, has much of the same information and pictures, but you can check it out on Google+, and I'll put a link to that in the description, as well as links to the websites that I mentioned and the, the website of this company. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.